Michael Waltz joins us now. Congressman uh, Waltz had everything to do with getting Jacksonville the RNC. Congressman, I, I played this. I, I played the FDA director saying, I'm not sure if everything's going to be okay to have the convention in Jacksonville. Are you sure? Yeah, hey, Brian. Look, I think there's going to be a, a number of key things in place that will be announced uh, over the coming weeks. One of the things that they're working on is getting a testing regime uh, uh, that will handle uh, the participants, will handle the convention. We can do this safely. I fully trust uh, the the governor and the mayor. You know they have been they have been right on this thing all along, despite all of the negativity that's been thrown at them. Uh, I, look, I'm in Florida now. Personal responsibility matters. Uh, businesses matter. Uh, people are wearing masks when they go inside, and they take them off when they're outside on a beautiful day. Uh, I, look, I, the, the, the end of the day, what is being thrown um, uh, at Florida and being thrown at the leadership here is this notion that they opened too soon and that they need to close back down. And that is just not a responsible solution. It's just not possible. So we have to learn to live with this. I mean, when you hear Governor Cuomo saying he's going to keep things shut down until we have a vaccine, well, what does that mean? Does that mean until one's invented? Does that mean until one's fully produced, fully distributed? And, you know, meanwhile, Brian, what drives me nuts is is that the people making these decisions are receiving government paychecks. They're getting paid twice a month when these business owners are having their livelihoods destroyed, when we can do both, uh, uh, are not. And, and I just don't think that's a responsible conversation to say we are going to shut back down uh, when in Northeast Florida right now, our, our ICU beds are at 30%. Uh, the, as you stated, the goal always was flatten the curve so that our hospital systems can prepare, not that a single person wasn't going to get an infection. Well, I'll give you and an I example of how crazy are. people of that. I mean, I, yeah. I know the president, he wants to let the states make the decisions, and the states are, in many cases, letting mayors make some decisions, but here's how crazy it is. Now the New Jersey governor says no indoor dining, yet they're, they're down to single digits or barely double digits in cases. There were zero cases in Suffolk County of where the Hamptons is, people might know around the country. Uh, zero cases. They still won't open up any gyms uh, in Manhattan. They go, we're moving to phase three, except for no indoor dining. Really? All the restaurateurs hired their people back. And then you change gears like that for no reason? Yeah. And the cases are down. Who the hell are you to do this to these people? And by the way, the banks aren't getting paid because the landlords aren't getting paid. And the landlords are kicking out all these restaurants. And the restaurants goes, listen, I can't pay my bills anyway. Maybe you're doing me a favor even though they took PPE money in order to sustain their businesses. So everyone said, well, I got to, you know, I got to be cautious. Keep in mind, there's a price to pay for caution. Well, that's absolutely right. And, and the other piece is to, is to just to treat the entire country or even a state as large as Florida with kind of these one size fits all policies. And that's where, you know, again, as you were saying, local rule matters. Local officials are elected. Uh, they do have a voice and they and they do have authority. And so in the case of Florida, you know, the vast majority are in South Florida. And if the mayor of, of Miami wants to pull back and pull back on their beaches temporarily to let things cool down, that's fine. But that is drastically different than North Northeast Florida, the panhandle, much more rural, much lower case count. And, and as I was stating, the hospitals, the hospitals have plenty of of room. Look, we don't want anyone to get sick. Don't get me wrong. But I, I don't think it is responsible given the suicides, the depressions, the deaths, the opioid addiction, all of the other the elective surgeries that aren't getting done. The consequences of continued unwarranted shutdowns are significant. And the mainstream media is not talking about them. I, uh, and yeah. but we have to. Well, in Texas, they are getting more, a little concerned about hospital beds in Houston and a couple other cities. Now they they have liberal areas of Texas, like there's liberal areas of every state, and one of which is Austin. That mayor was against reopening uh, at the pace in which the governor was reopening, who has since pushed pulled back uh, on this, and the numbers are growing significantly. Here's what Mayor Stephen Adler said about the virus, and he thinks the president is screwing up. Cut, 20, cut 27. 
It's not harmless. Uh, there are people that are dying in my community. It's incredibly disruptive. Uh, and the messaging coming from the President of the United States is dangerous and it is harmful. Uh, one of the biggest problems that we have in terms of getting the community to do those behaviors that are necessary to coexist with this virus, one of the biggest challenges we have is the messaging coming out of Washington that would suggest that masks don't work or it's not necessary or that the virus is going away on its own. That is one of the chief hurdles and, and, and barriers that we're facing. Your reaction? Well, I think that's, unfortunately, that's playing politics with this virus, which we've, which we've absolutely seen. The, the, the president has been clear. Heck, I know uh, a number of the senior folks in the White House that are spending their days dealing with other countries giving ventilators away because uh, of, of the policies that he took to kick our industrial base into overdrive and in some cases use the Defense Production Act to get PPE manufactured, to get the uh, correct drugs, uh, you know, the operation warp speed with the vaccine, to get ventilators manufactured. Uh, but, you know, on the one hand, these, these local officials, you know, they have the authority to pull back if they want. On the other hand, they're perfectly fine to accept all the federal help from the president from the Congress and, and, and everyone else. So, you know, I think uh, there, there, is, there is just a philosophical difference in the viewpoints here. The federal government is there to provide resources down to the state level and down to the local level, which the president has absolutely done. But at the end of the day, downtown Austin, downtown Miami is different than West Indiana, Oklahoma, Alaska. And that is where, you know, we have to have some nuance and some middle ground as we're making these decisions. Uh, but, but again, this demand for one size fits all national shutdowns, national mask mandates, uh, I just think is, is really endemic of how we view governing and how the left views governing. So one and thing is, to me, it yeah. just doesn't make sense. Uh, the lack of law and order in our country is something you used to doing when you were in the when you were in the army. But yeah. we're seeing seventy seven shot in Chicago, seventeen dead in Atlanta. Uh, Fourteen were wounded and one killed, including a seven year old girl. Um, she is killed just by being in a car and go and her mom driving up to a barricade. This is this is black on black crime. That we understand in Portland, they've had 38 straight days of unrest and violence, and they're looking to and making progress on disbanding the entire police force. In New York, shootings were up 205%. There were 42 shot and nine killed in New York over the weekend. This lawlessness that's happening, I've never seen it in my lifetime. Michael, have you? The president says, I might be, to, I'm asking these mayors if they need help. I might do something anyway. What could, could he do about this? Well, you know, what was so sad to me, Brian, was, and this was politics at its worst with what just happened with this police reform bill, where a very reasonable compromise bill that would, could take steps uh, that came from Tim Scott, that came out of the Senate, was blocked by the Democrats in the Senate so that Pelosi could pass her bill uh, which she knew there were things in there like banning no knock warrants, like pulling immunity away from uh, away from police that we would never support and never get signed into law. But she wanted to be able to point to the fact that she passed a bill and the Senate didn't, knowing that at the end of the day, nothing would get signed into law rather than sitting down, compromising with Republicans. Uh, and compromising with the president so that we could maybe have 60% of something rather than 100% of nothing. And Clyburn right. said so over the la last weekend, James Clyburn said to uh, said to his interview, I think it was Meet the Press, yeah, the, Mitch McConnell would not let uh, Senator... Um, uh, would not let, uh, not let Senator... Um, Tim Scott? Yeah, so and not let Senator Tim Scott or anybody else negotiate with the Democrats. And that's just not true. No, it's absolutely no. It's absolutely not true uh, on on that side. And not a single Republican was invited to the table by Nancy by Nancy Pelosi. So if she had ten things in her bill, and we could come to a compromise on five or six that could go to the president and get signed, that's how it's supposed to be done. That's how our system should work, rather than this purist approach, so that she could say I passed something and they didn't. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, we, but at the end yeah. of the day, it doesn't get signed into law, and that is a shame. I've never seen this kind of 
uh, lawlessness in my lifetime. I think the American people are going to demand change and defunding police, whether these are sex crimes units, molestation units, inner city units, undercover units, that, that the police need more uh, resources, not less, more training, not less. And I want everybody listening to know you absolutely have my support. So there's men and women in blue strapping on that belt and badge every day to get between us and the bad guy. And if any, any politician doesn't say that, they should be fired. Congressman Waltz, uh, last question. I believe Democrats, and you tell me if, when you talk to them, they're very confident they're going to win the presidency and the Senate, going to pass this simple filibuster, and they're going to change everything. Everything. Yeah, look, I mean, Brian, this is what I keep saying. These leftist policies uh, that we are seeing, whether it's Green New Deal, defund the police, government run health care, this is not just rhetoric and hot air from, you know, Bernie, from Elizabeth Warren or others. These that legislation is passing the House. It is stopping, but for a few seats in the Senate and the presidency, it will become law. Nancy Pelosi will be the tail wagging the dog. She will be, you know, to a new Biden administration saying, sign here, Mr. President, sign here. Uh, and that will become law. That will become the, the new America. And that is not an America that I almost died twice for uh, defending. Uh, a, a socialist America and one being then run and dominated by Chinese communists around the world in a new world order that where they call the shots and America doesn't. So that's really what's at stake this election. And we have to turn out and vote. But just so you know, for the record, lastly, if, if you're going to the Jacksonville convention, Jacksonville for the convention, you should still go. Yes, you should still go. There is a absolutely you should still go. We are working, like I said, on full protective measures. There's going to be more hand sanitizer than you could shake a stick at. There's going to be masks. There's going to be, uh, you know, I don't want to get ahead of the RNC, but they are working on a very robust testing regime. Absolutely, you should come. And like I said, that this is a shot in the arm that our business community uh, uh, badly needs. We can come together safely. Uh, and celebrate this president's nomination. And, and what I'm looking forward to him doing is talking about his record uh, from justice reform to tax reform to, to the bills for the Veterans Administration to everything he's done from Israel for Israel gotcha. and right down the list. He's got a lot to run on, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to him talking about it. Congressman Waltz, thanks so much. See you soon.